loud. All right, welcome to the call, everybody. It's our Team Connect call um, every Monday night at nine. So um, if, you're, if you or your business builders have a hard time remembering it, have them set a reminder on their phone for 845 with an alarm, because um, this is a really important. Um, it really is. And sometimes I think that we think we can skip them, but it is an essential part to your business and to your new consultant's business. So it's great for you to be on here and plugged in and engaged. Um, so I'm going to start with a couple of housekeeping things and then we'll get into the training. So um, a lot of us on the call and a lot of the South Carolina team, we just got back from impact training tour, which was amazing the best one I've ever been to I've been to this is my fourth one and it was my favorite one because it was just packed full of powerhouses I mean there were you know I love that it was just all stories and their you know how they did it but it, it was just amazing so I loved it it was so fun I hope you guys loved it too um, but now that that's behind us you know prior to impact I talked about it and Debbie talked we talked about it constantly right we were like register for impact register for impact so we're just gonna get ahead of the curveball. GTC, Global Training Conference, is May 16th through the 18th. Registration will open in November, typically. I don't have a date yet, but it'll open in November. Start saving your money. If you feel like that's gonna be an issue for you, you need to put $20, you need to reinvest in your business, and you need to be there. It's amazing. Um, so Global Training Conference in Las Vegas, May 16th through the 18th. Tell your husbands, don't freak out. It's nothing wild or crazy. It's just a bunch of girls. All of Vegas is Arbonne, really. Um, so it's amazing. So that's kind of, um, I think if you saw a little glimpse at impact of what the, the power of an event like this does to your business and to your belief, um, GTC will do the same thing. So that's the first thing that I wanted to say. Also, Arbon has extended our um, $49 P, um, consultant sign up. So best way to grow your business is to sponsor business builders. So don't forget about that. And that Karen is doing the fall into momentum challenge. So if you haven't watched that and haven't accepted it, go to the team um, better together Facebook page and watch it and, um, and and plug into that. So those are kind of some housekeeping things. Um, so anyway, one more thing for housekeeping. Yes, go ahead. Yes, one more thing for housekeeping. Discover Arbonne Tuesday Night Live Facebook group tomorrow night. We are going to talk about healthy skin. So if you're okay. not already a part of the Discover Arbonne (parentheses Tuesday Night Live) Facebook group, we can add you. Just ask your sponsor to add you. We go live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So tomorrow night, healthy skin. And you're going to be, so tomorrow night, is it a Discover Arbonne plus healthy skin or is it just talking about healthy skin? We do a little bit of Discover Arbonne at the end. However, it's mainly about skincare on the second Tuesday. The third Tuesday of the month is always purely a Discover Arbonne. The fourth Tuesday is about healthy living with okay. a little bit of Discover at the end. Okay. All right, good. Yeah, if you guys um, haven't been added to that and you would like to be, just um, text your, you know, area manager or VP and we can get you added to that. So. Yeah, and invite anyone you want. Invite your clients and your prospects. Sure, anybody you want. And then we have our local meeting in Greenville next Monday night at Embassy Suites at 7 p.m. So if you are in Greenville or this upstate of South Carolina, start thinking about who you're inviting and bring people. And then um, Karen's team in Michigan, they just had their meeting tonight. So um, you'll have a month to get ready for that. Okay, so tonight um, I wanna talk about vision because we're all leaving impact and I have gotten so many text messages yesterday and today from people in our organization and on our team saying, I'm ready, like I, I'm ready to do this. I'm so fired up. And I think part of it is that, A, you go and you get to see these women who are just like you and me, and you think, man, you know, there's nothing, not that there's nothing special because they're amazing, but there's nothing all that, like, different about them that makes, you know, I can do that. If they can do it, I can do it. And also just the power of the energy and being around other people who believe in this business model and believe so strongly in the products is so invigorating. But... I know that we're all fired up and we're ready to go and we're ready to grow our businesses. But I think that sometimes we can leave and we can be on cloud nine and then we go, 
okay, now what? Like, I'm so excited, but now what? Well, what am I going to do to move this excitement into um, momentum in my business and actually grow my business? So um, I talked about this a little on the bus, but we have people from Michigan and all over the country as well. But I just wanted to, to reiterate, I'm only going to talk about two points. I'm going to talk about vision and then goal setting and kind of what the difference is, um, because they are different. Um, vision your vision statement or your mission statement. And you can just, I asked everybody on the bus, if you weren't on the bus to kind of go home and write down their mission statement or their vision statement. Um, if you've done that, just wave at me. Yay. Okay. So some people have done it. I love that because sometimes we have notes and we have these to do items that we don't actually get to. If you haven't done it yet, I would highly, highly encourage you to sit down tonight and write out that vision or mission statement. And what that looks like is, you know, um, Danielle Lawler, Law, Law, Lawler, I think that's how you say it. She, when she trained, she asked some questions um, like, what are the five things you would be doing if you were financially free? What are worth five things that you would be doing if you had um, time freedom? Um, what were the five things that you'd be doing if, with your impact in other people's lives? And so all of those things together can make up that vision or mission statement. But kind of how um, a, good, a great book, if you haven't read it, and we've talked about it several times is Mach 2. There's a whole chapter on how to write your vision statement. And these chapters, y'all, are so digestible. It's, two, it's two, two pages, three pages. It's so easy in there. It's like a workbook style. So I would recommend getting the actual book instead of the um, audio book. But work on that vision statement. And so now that, now that you've, let's, let's assume that you've written your vision statement, which you're all going to do by the time you go to bed tonight. Um, what do you want out of this business? What do you want your days to look like? How do you want this business to impact your life and your family and all of that? And if, and if you're kind of an audio learner and just mentioned this on the bus, then, then vision statements and mission statements are great. If you're really visual, dream boards are amazing to cast vision. Um, dream boards are basically, if you haven't done one or if you don't know what that is, it's a, you know, it's just a, sticky board where you put pictures of what you're trying to manifest in your business. So pictures of strong business builders, pictures of a checking account and your paycheck and your direct deposit that you want to see coming into your account, pictures of you on stage mentoring other women, pictures of, you know, anything that you want to do or, or see in your life um, or in your business, put that on there. So if you haven't done that, do it. Be very clear, clear, clear with your vision. Because I'm more and more learning that if you don't have a clear vision in this business, you won't be motivated into activity. And so I'm going to tell, some of you may know my Arbon story and some of you may not, but I just want to um, just tell you a brief snippet of it. And Jessica Pilgrim texted me today and asked me to share this. And I, and I thought, you know, that's really good because I don't think about it that much anymore. But when I started Arbon three and a half years ago, it was um, February, I think, 23rd, 2015, and um, I didn't know anything about the company. I didn't know anything about the products. I knew nothing. And I just somehow, God gave me this great vision. <laughs> I mean, it was like, wow. And I remember Debbie being like, like, how do you do that? Like, how do you have this vision? And I didn't know, I don't know. It was, it was huge. And I would cast this vision and I didn't know it was called vision. I had no idea what I was doing, but I had this massive vision and y'all, I got to area manager as fast as you could. I started and I was an area manager. I like blew past district and it was because I was casting vision for other people. And they, because I was casting it so clearly and so strongly, they could see it and they could feel it for themselves. Does that make sense? And so that's how vision can impact your business. And don't shy away from sharing it. When you, if you have this vision of Arbonne and how it can change your life, don't feel silly sharing it. Don't feel like um, people will make fun of you because you know what? Um, if anybody follows Shannon Wenzel or if you were there at Impact, she's a national vice president and she is so direct and so to the point and there's nothing she, she doesn't stick a toe in the water at anything she does that I can imagine. She is just all in, just kind of balls to the wall kind of person. And I was talking to Caroline Epting today and I'm like, you know, who wouldn't follow her? There's no, I mean, there's nothing about her that doesn't exude confidence. So when you're casting your vision, you can be bold and you can be strong and really cast it for other people. But 
in order to cast it, you have to know what it is. So really dig in on that and figure out what it is and do the homework that, that we're talking about. Um, because that's going to keep you motivated. And then once you've written it, you have to read it two times a day in the morning and at night. You really do. You can make copies, write, type it on your computer, make copies, put one beside your bed, put one where you drink your coffee or whatever and read it twice a day. And as you're reading it, you can't just read it. Like sometimes I read my devotion. You can't just read it and go, wait a minute. What did I just read? I want you to read it with emotion, not out loud. You can read it out loud if you want to, but I want you to picture it. I want you to picture what you're doing in that vision statement. All vision statements have to be written in present tense as if they are happening right now. It's not, I will um, be a regional vice president or I will sponsor. It is, I am a regional vice president. I am driving the white Mercedes. This is my, I am experiencing financial and time freedom. Does that make sense? I hope so. So write it present tense as if it's already going on. Um, and again, read it twice a day because that's going to motivate you to do all the things that a lot of us hate to do in this business, myself included. Um, I was in the beginning of Arbonne and for a really long time, I was so driven by my vision that I didn't care what I had to do to get to my goal. It didn't even feel like a goal. It was like when your vision is so strong, it pulls you like you don't even know. I mean, like you're like, wait a minute. I, it doesn't even feel like work almost. Um, so I, I, I think that sometimes as we're in Arbonne a little longer for some of us, or maybe if you don't have a really clear vision to start with, the work feels like work, but if you're drawn by vision and you're really empowered by that, it's just like, yeah, you know, it's like chomping at the bit on fire to tell somebody. Um, so anyway, you've got your vision statement. You're reading it twice a day. You've done your dream board. If you're a super visual learner, we're going to try to have um, a local and I'm sure Karen does this for her team in Michigan. We're going to try to have a, um, you know, a, a dream board meeting or a, a thing for consultants to coming up here soon. We're just trying to figure that out. So you've got all that down. So now what? So the next step is setting your goals. Cause like I said, it is a little bit different. Goals and vision are a little different. So goals are this month, I'm going to hit my 2,500 break, or I'm going to do you and new and you, uh, you and new, however you want to say it, 2,500 I'm going to sponsor three new business builders. I'm going to have 10 group presentations. And listen, if you're thinking, well, it's September the 10th and if I'm not, I can't, I can't do it this month. I'm going to wait until October and then I'll do 10. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do it to yourself. Start right now, get into activity and get into momentum and shoot for those 10 group presentations. So those are the things, those really tangible um, number driven things are goals right? So you have your big vision that's pulling you, it's pulling you and you can't even stop it. And then you have those little tangible goals that what I would like for you to do. Well, first of all, this is something I really want to touch on for a second because it's something that we talked about today. Three things to get you into action. The first thing is go meet friends and have no expectation of Argonne. Go to the gym, go to church, Go to work and be the nicest, most friendly person in the room. It don't mention Arbon. Don't say anything about it. Just get to know other people. And there's an acronym that you can use. Um, it's Ford, like Ford the car, that you should leave every conversation knowing these things about a person. Okay. I mean, I, I really know that you should leave. If it's a short conversation, the fourth one might be weird, but these four things leave every conversation need knowing about their family, their occupation, recreation, and recreation means, okay, where'd you go on vacation? Where are you, what are you planning to do for Thanksgiving? I mean, any kind of recreation that they're doing, what do they love to do for their hobbies? And then D are their dreams. So if you follow F-O-R-D, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, you should leave every conversation knowing those four things about your new friend, right? your new friend, they may or may not be a prospect. You might leave that conversation and go, God, I would rather stab myself in the eyeball than sponsor that person. And that's okay. But you still know those four things about that person. Okay. So that that's something I did want to touch on. That was 2A. Um, 2B, goals. I want you to write them on index cards. So if your goals are 10 group presentations or sponsor five people or 2,500 new and new PQV, 
write them on five different index cards and put these index cards in, in these five places. And you can change this a little bit if you don't spend a lot of time in the car, if you just are home all day with babies or whatever, you can change it. But on your bathroom mirror, on your refrigerator, because we know we all, we all are in the refrigerator, um, in your car, on your desk, and maybe beside your bed. Pick places where you're gonna see them all the time. It's a subconscious reminder of your goals constantly, right? So you're reading your vision statement twice a day. Your goals are in five places around your house. And here's the scary part. Scary part is you're gonna tell as many people as you know what your goal is. You're gonna tell your upline for sure, okay? Because we have to know we can't help you if we don't know what your goal is. So text them right when we get off this call. If you know what your goal is, it can be your short-term monthly goal and your long-term business goal, or it can just be your short-term monthly goal, whatever. But you gotta tell people. Um, if you wanna get on, I saw um, Caroline Stevens did a real vulnerable Instagram story um, this week, yesterday, I believe. And guess what? She's got four people saying they wanna do the business with her. Four people from a vulnerable Instagram story saying, putting it out there to the universe <laughs> that these are my goals. This is what I want from this business. This is why I'm doing this business. People respond to that. They want authentic. They want to see you saying, this is why I'm doing it. And this is why I love it. So tell as many people as you possibly can. If you have a downline, if you have a team, tell them, proclaim it. Um, Cause it creates momentum. I hope that that makes sense. And then the third thing on my thing is, again, read your vision statement twice a day. So anyway, those are kind of, those are my notes. That's, that's really all I have written down for the training. But um, three things to get you into action and to motivate you are reading your vision statement, writing down your goals in five places and put them, putting them in five different places. And then um, when you, everybody you meet, Try to add two new people to your 100 person list every single day and they're just new friends. You haven't dropped the Arbonne bomb on them yet. The goal is to have them like you so much that they come to you, right? That's the goal. Now, is that always gonna happen? Are you gonna still schedule stuff and ask people to meet with you? Absolutely. But you want them to just enjoy your company because you care so much and you ask so many questions about them and you want to get to know them and just make new friends. So I'm fired up. I'm excited. I'm um, thrilled that we had such a big group, good impact. I think everybody really, really enjoyed it. If anybody has any key takeaways, I mean, I only talked for 20 minutes. So listen, jump in. If you have anything you want to say about what you learned, if anybody wants to share their goal right here, right now, don't be a chicken. Come on. You got this. Share it. Go un unmute and tell us what your goals are. Cause you know what? Guess what guys, let me tell you something. If you say I'm going to be an RVP on November 30th and you don't hit it, we're not going to be like, mm -hmm. we knew. we're like cheering you on no matter what. So this is not a place where you're going to experience um, shame or, anything like that. This is us just wanting to know so that we can help you. And then if, if you don't hit your goal, you move your date. You know how many times I've moved my dates? I thought I'd be a region in like, I don't know. I don't know, four months. I remember I really thought that because I was like, oh, I'm an area. Well, shoot, regions is right there. And it was 20 months. But guess what? I didn't quit. I just moved my date. So it's not a big deal. But yeah, if anybody wants to unmute and share anything, we would love to hear it. And um, any takeaways from Impact in Knoxville? Hmm. Hey, it's Jess again. Hey. I declare to my team that I'm going nation in March 2019. Okay. Awesome. Yay. That is amazing. Jess said she's going... Now, you're kind of like um, not super clear, so I'm going to say Jessica Pilgrim, she is an RVP in Seneca, South Carolina. If you don't know her, she is declaring nation in March of 2019, so right before GTC. And I will tell you, you can go, you can promote a level anytime in your business, but fall and spring, that's when they, people just pop, pop like crazy. This month, September, 
I think is like the second largest, did Karen, did you say that? This is the second largest month for healthy living um, of the year, January and September, because kids go back to school and people feel nasty from the summer. So fall and spring. So yes, so we're going to be cheering you on, Jess. Awesome. Yep. And I was going to say we, so everyone on this call and everyone listening to this recording will be a nation January 1st. Debbie's, Debbie's declaring nation. Well, if you're in her nation, so Karen's right, people aren't right. in your nation. <laughs> right, I forgot Karen's like not. Corey, <laughs> you, you, yeah. And a bunch of other people. Rhonda, I see, I see some people That's that aren't, but okay, so Thompson Nation is popping January 1. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. RVP by GTC. <laughs> I like it. Who said that? Oh, Susan, yay! <laughs> Oh, and then here's my other one, which is the most hilarious thing, and I don't even know why this is a thing, but I want to have the most men on my team, my downline, whatever, it, it, and so far, like, the people I've been talking to have been a lot of guys. It's, it's just weird. It's just, it's been coming. It's like, oh, when, remember when you said you, you picture the person that you're wanting um, on your team, and one of them was, I had a friend in my head, and I know we weren't really supposed to, like, specifically you know, peg somebody that where I said, I want a guy, I want him to be fun. And the guy that popped in my head was this personal trainer at my gym. His name is Harrison and he's Asian. And he wasn't really interested. I mean, he was kind of interested, but he was just like, mm, not right now. And I'm like, okay. But then since then, Katie, her cousin, his name is Harrison and he's very interested in the business. And then the past two days, I've met two Asian guys that I think would be, not that I'm like looking for Asian, but it was just kind of funny. It was just like, you, you know, have that clear vision of what you want. And then seeing that one guy on the stage and I was just like going, why would you not want to be a guy in this business? Because that guy got the biggest round of applause. <laughs> and I mean, what you think about, you think about. Yeah, exactly. So that it was just kind of funny. For them. If they could just wrap their head around it, women will oh, buy yeah. anything from men, especially yeah. if they say, you look pretty in that makeup, and you're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's funny. I just, I was just like, I've always hung out with guys. I was, you know, always the, the one of the guys kind of person. So it's kind of funny to me. That's why I'm like, well, I'm, I want to have more guys around me too. Not that you women aren't amazing because you guys are, but have hey, a little I think it's awesome. And what you're looking for is looking for you. That's a saying that we, we say a lot in our bond. What you're looking for is looking for you. So when you do have a clear vision, and I'll tell this story, 30 second story this morning, Ellis couldn't find her shoes in the whole house. I mean, it was just a nightmare. Feeling, everybody's yelling at each other, trying to get out the door, can't find the shoes. Ugh. I mean, it was just ugly in my house. And they got out the door and I walked right back in the kitchen and they were right in front of our face. <laughs> so it's like, we just were not focused on right where they should be. We were looking all around, just messing with everything. So anyway, you just open your eyes to what right what's right in front of you sometimes, and it's there. Amazing. Okay, who else wants to share? Hey, Heather. It's Corey. I, I am driving. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. I'm driving, so I can't look at you, and it's dark, but I am declaring Team Foster Region on January 1st, 2019. Yes, I love it. I would join your team. Oh, thank you. That's a heck of a compliment coming from you. <laughs> I would totally join your team. That's awesome. Good. We'll celebrate in Vegas. Absolutely. Good for you. Anybody else want to go? your heart beating fast, like you're scared to share it, that's probably a good thing. I'll go. I'm not scared to share it at all. Um, I've been our bond for three years, and I've never sponsored anybody because I've been dormant. And I've been on the sidelines. They were talking about dipping your toe in because I use the products. I think they're great. I listen to everything everybody says, and um, I, I'm a very, like, processed oriented person. So you analysis paralysis kind of thing. But I've been in a sales job now for two years in my real life. I don't want to do it anymore. Um, I've learned some amazing things. And one of those is that you can have a skill that's different from the person next to you that's successful and still be successful in your own way. Um, and so watching every single woman stand up and say what their success story was, each one of them was different. And I remember, Heather, not to call you out, but I remember asking in a meeting um, about building a team because I don't, 
I've asked my family. I called my, my husband's aunt and they're like, that's sweet, but I like Mary Kay and <laughs> whatever. And so I dropped, I dropped hints, but I did that. I wasn't afraid to. Um, so I'm, I'm online. Like the girl that said social media, I started a new Instagram page. It's about our bond. I'm celiac. So I'm using that angle. Like I'm going gluten-free Australia, New Zealand, whatever, following everything. And I have like 200 followers already. So, which is small, but so I'm trying to build my own way, which may be strange to somebody else, but um, I'm going to do that and then make Debbie force me to do some presentations locally. So um, sprinkling things into my busy, crazy life. All right. So your goal is to sponsor some consultants. That was a really long way to tell you that I just want to sponsor somebody. <laughs> okay. So you're going to sponsor. So who, are, who, are you, who are you bringing to our meeting? Don't, you don't have to say this out loud. Don't say it out loud. I just want you to think, who are you bringing to our meeting next week? Um, even if you have to go pick them up, bring them to the meeting and write them down, write those goals down and look at it everywhere you are. All those five places, write it down. Let that vision pull you of quitting. Picture yourself quitting your job. <gasps> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Visualize it. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. If anybody on there is at my job, don't say anything. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah. I had, I had that struggle too. I hear you. I have worried about that for years. Nobody ever told, not that I know of. Nobody fired me. So. Yeah. That's good. And I wanted to mention too, something that Heather um, said on the bus that I think was really impactful to some folks and I heard back that it was. So Heather read her mission statement. And within her mission statement, she mentioned two people on her team as her very specific names. You all know who you are. You could say Heather if you want, but um, mm -hmm. who are her next RVPs? And at, I think for a moment, you know, I, I, you know, I was thinking, oh, she's going to rattle off a bunch of names and all that. And it was just two and you, you know, a very large team. And I think what was impactful is she looked up and looked at everyone and said, and if I didn't mention your name, it's because you haven't told me you wanted that. So why would I create a vision for you? You're just not in my vision right now because you didn't say you wanted to be. So I say that right. because if you haven't told us, then we don't know and we can't create our vision around your vision because it's important for us to work as a team that way. And I know Susan, there you are. I could see you in your square. I know that made a really big impact on you when she said that and, and she told me this morning, she went, I want to be one of your babies. <laughs> and I thought that was awesome because I need to have you in my vision. That's really important. So get with your upline VP or area manager and get in their vision because it's another angle. It's another way for you to partner with your upline. Absolutely. Um, I'm glad that that made an impact because, you know, you're hesitant because you don't want to leave anybody out. You don't want to say, well, I don't want you to be a VP, but it's never that. It's yeah. we, I want anybody who wants to be a VP, but those are the ones that I know have this passionate vision and mindset around it. And they want it and they've told me they've claimed it and that's their vision. So you're right. And you know, when you're new guys and you have a strong vision, this was a, this was a pain point for me early on is I had this vision that I was like, what is wrong with all you people? You don't have this vision like I have. And so clearly either I'm crazy or you're stupid. I mean, it was like, um, you know, I'm being like just blunt, but, and so it was really hard for me to not get crushed by somebody else's lack of vision. I don't know if that makes sense. It kind of crushed me. Um, it was, it just hurt my, like it hurt my heart. Um, but you, you just have to realize that, like you said, this it's whatever somebody else's vision is, is it's okay totally okay. If somebody wants to be a district manager, manager, that's great. That's what they can be. They just want to be a consultant and share with their mom. That's great. So yeah, I'm glad that made an impact. I'm waiting to hear from other people. I've heard, heard a couple of areas out there, you know. All right. Anybody else want to go? Caroline, go I ahead. I am. Yes. I'm claiming to finish area by October. That's my goal. It's happening. Yeah, it is happening. No doubt. That, if anybody's wondering, that's one of the VPs that was on my list. 
one of the two. The other one's Catherine Dodd. And she's a baby. She's probably got in baby land right now. Anybody else want to go? I will claim region by January 1. Sweet. Uh, we need more car presentations. Did you hear that, Karen? I, I just said, yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if anybody else wants to go, speak now or forever hold your peace. All right, Caroline, hold me accountable. All right, Caroline, hold me accountable. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can yes. Hear. Sarah, is that you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Wait, did it, is it still there? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to be district by 2019, or January 1st, 2019, and I'll sponsor two people. Awesome. I love it. Okay, right. Sarah, write it down. I, I have it. And listen, y'all, can I tell y'all, Sarah's been a consultant like a day. She came to Knoxville on the bus and she was like, I'm Sarah. Nice to meet everybody. I mean, just brand spanking new. So you go, girl. I love it. You're going to do it way before then. I know you will, girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's right. Your goal will change in a couple of weeks, but that's okay. We're going to support okay. whatever it is. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for, for plugging in. Anybody have any questions? Nope. All right. We will see everybody live next Monday night at Embassy Suites at 7 p.m. with your guests. Debbie Thompson's going to be doing the um, DA and, um, yeah, that's it. Is there a flyer for that yet? No. Um, <laughs> no, that's okay. I was just curious. I mean, I'll just uh, I like being able to like forward one, but I mean, I I'm, suppose, I'm I making one. Oh, okay. Um. Yay! I well, I'm gonna sit down and make one tomorrow. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, yeah, what is the you. Discover Argonne live tomorrow night on Facebook? We have a healthy skin enthusiast who's going to talk with us and share with us her experience with the skincare. And then next Tuesday night, we have That's a amazing. teacher. So if you guys have teachers in your life who yeah. you've you just thought about for the business Come in. and they need a teacher perspective, they can plug into the Discover Arbonne next. Tuesday for teachers. Awesome. Great. Sounds good. Okay, I'm going to say one more thing and then we're going to close. Um, Shannon said something that resonated with me on Saturday. People do business with people that they know, they like, and they trust. So go make people know, like, and trust you <laughs> in a very authentic way. Don't be fake about it. Nobody likes fake. They can smell insincerity a mile away. Go be likable. Go know. Go be trustworthy. All those things. All right. We will see you guys next Monday. Good night. Thanks, Heather. Bye. Bye. Great.